everybody, today we are debating whether or not atheism is the default, and we are starting right now. Ladies and gentlemen, thrilled to have you here. We have one echo. I just have to figure out where this echoes. There it is. Got it? <clears throat> so... With that, ladies and gentlemen, we are thrilled to have you here. Today's epic debate on whether or not atheism is the default is going to be going to be an epic one. If you could, uh, if you're in the live chat, if you can let me know if there is an echo for you or if it's just for me. No echo. Well, that's terrific. I'm I'm the only one hearing it. That's good. I can deal with it. So, thanks for being here, folks. We are very excited for this epic debate, as today we will be debating whether or not atheism is the default. We have our dear friends, Randolph and Deflating Atheism. It's going to be no a echo. great well, that's time. Terrific. I'm, so, I'm the only with one that, it. that's good. Very I excited, deal folks, with it. to so, have you thanks here. Thanks for being here, folks. What we're, we're going to do is want to excite you for this your first time here. Debate. Consider hitting as that today, subscribe button. We will be debating as whether we have or not many atheism future debates coming up that we, we are, are very dear excited for Randolph including if you haven't heard atheism. about it somehow it's going to be no, a we are going to have Mike Jones so, and, and Matt that, Dillahunty that's good. very I excited to debate on whether or not there are good reasons folks, to believe in God this, this coming Saturday so that's going to be an epic one folks very big debate coming up and also want to let you know that our guests have their links in the description so both Randolph and Jones and Matt Dillahunty there is an echo okay forgive me guys Reasons to believe in God. I'm so sorry, you guys. I, that's going to be an epic debate. And our audience here is very yeah, big well, yeah. debate coming up. There, 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 there's a little there's microphone noise on your end. Right. 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 Oh, my apologies. So, there's, a, there's a really bad echo. Oh, I know what it is. There is an echo. That's embarrassing. I just took care of it. Thank you guys so much. Whew. All gone. Oh, that's so embarrassing. Thanks so much for your patience, everybody. So excited to be here. We tried. We're basically doing a new, like, way of streaming in which we have these, like, future events that are coming up. And so that's what you were you were hearing as, as we were doing this. And it's all good now, though. So thanks both Randolph and Deflating Atheism for your patience. We still got, <laughs> still got a, every, looks like everybody stuck around. Thanks for your grace, everybody. Everybody's honestly, I gotta say, I was telling both Randolph and Deflating Atheism before we started, I was like, this is honestly, it puts me in such a good mood. I'm so thankful for the debaters coming here. There's a lot of places they can debate. So we're thankful they come here to hang out with us. This channel, the... The debaters are the lifeblood of the channel. Like, they they make it great. And so if you enjoy this channel, I want to let you know, uh, please give those debaters a thank you and just let them know how much you appreciate them. And if you do enjoy what you're hearing from them, if you're like, hmm, I like that. I want to hear more of that. You can click on their link and subscribe in the description box just down there, if you can see in that little description box down there. Now, we are very excited. So basically for today's debate, though, we're going to have Randolph leading off. It's a flexible 10-minute opening statement. And for that... <clears throat> Somebody's asking for a microphone check. You bet. I think that it's a little bit... I can turn you guys up. I've got you guys up, like, pretty good now. Okay. Randolph, go ahead and if you guys want to say hello, thanks for being here, you guys. Hello, I'm uh, Randolph Richardson. I'm with the Canadian Atheists, and uh, I'm here to argue that uh, atheism, the absence of belief in deities, is in fact the default when we're born. You betcha. Thank you very much. And deflating atheism, thanks for being here as well. Glad to have you. Hello, my name is Deflating Atheism. I'm, I'm the provider of the uh, of the YouTube channel Deflating Atheism, which is uh, now uh, pretty much moribund. So uh, uh, please do subscribe because uh, YouTube is making it very difficult to to organically grow your YouTube channels these days. But yes, thank you for having me on. Gosh, you, you betcha. And also, before I forget, first want to say thank you so much for Math Pig and Tony Designs. 
Tony Designs, very, very cranky moderator. <laughs> so, <laughs> I love you, Tony. But Tony is like, we're, we're working out this like, what, you know, what do we allow in terms of like abuse in the live chat, stuff like that. Obviously, we don't want hate speech. Um, Tony has, he sticks to the, the YouTube guidelines, which is kind of like, hey, who can blame him? I mean, that's pretty smart, right? We're on YouTube. Uh, so uh, if Tony ever says, hey, please don't call the debater the B word. It's like, it's, it's also true. It's like, well, we're thankful to have the debaters. So please don't call, please don't abuse the debaters. If anybody lob your anger at me, I'll take it. But <clears throat> Math Pig and Tony Designs have set up a Discord for us. We will party there after this debate. So uh, we're, it's a uh, Randolph I know can make it and deflating atheism. I, I was so, uh, I'm so bad at reminding people. I didn't let him know on time. So he might not make it, but it's going to be a party. Everybody's invited. Christian, atheist, no matter who you are, we hope you feel welcome there. We'll be partying in the Discord after, and that's linked below in the description if you haven't seen our Discord yet, which again, thanks to Tony Designs and Math Pig for setting that up. So anyway, stoked. We're going to let Richard get the ball rolling as he's going to make his case for why atheism is the default. It's a flexible 10 minute opening, you know, something like that. So thank you for being here again, Richard, and the floor is all Randolph. yours. Randolph. Oh yeah. gosh, I got that you're a mix of your first name you're and last name. My last name. Thank yeah. you, Randolph. Thank you. <laughs> no problem, James. Well, um, thank you very much for having me on this program. It's a, it's a pleasure to meet uh, Deflating Atheism. Uh, the proposition today uh, is uh, uh, basically in the form of a question, uh, uh, whether we are born uh, knowing, uh, believing in a deity or multiple deities or not believing in any. I, it seems to me that we're born under the concept of uh, tabula rasa, which means blank slate, which is a term that is used in philosophy. And uh, it seems to make sense to me since the brain is still going through major development at the time of birth and we are starting out, we may have some personal character traits, uh, personality traits and uh, things that will incline us to have certain interests when we're, we're older just because it matches these things. But um, I, I think that when it comes to uh, believing in a deity or a number of deities, uh, there is a, a minimum intellectual requirement of having at least a basic idea of the concept of what a deity is. It doesn't have to be a full complex concept, it, uh, a fully involved concept. It just has to be a very basic general idea. So first that idea has to be formed. And then after that idea is formed, it would then be possible to believe in that deity. Um, so how this idea gets formed, some people create it, but I, I think based on what I've seen it, throughout my life, it, it seems that most people are introduced to it by somebody else, maybe through a book or maybe uh, because of word of mouth or because of their, their social circles. What is very interesting is um, if there is um, uh, supposedly a deity to believe in, um, and the idea being that this deity has imprinted this belief on us um, at the time of birth, uh, or even before then, so that we're ready for it when we're born. Um, does this, uh, why is the result different in so many different parts of the world where some people are believing in a, a single monotheistic deity? It could be Allah from Islam. It could be uh, the Christian God. It could be a goddess from some other faith, or it could be a, a, a number of deities in a polytheistic religion. So I think um, it's it's going to be interesting to hear the explanation for why there is this discrepancy as well. Um, I'm not convinced that it's the case. I'm, I don't want to go so far as to claim uh, definitely not, um, because I don't know the minds of those who are newly born. Uh, but I, looking back on my own experience, I have never held a belief in a deity. Um, so it, it just, to me, it, it seems to make more sense that we're born without any beliefs and without any knowledge, and we develop this over time as we get older. Thank you very much. You bet. Thank you very much, Randolph. Always a pleasure. And now we will switch it over to Deflating Atheism for his opening as well. Glad to have you here as well, Deflating. Thank you. Uh, I, I kind of anticipated that that uh, he might lean more towards the lack of belief atheism. I tried to cover both bases uh, in my opening statement, 
But uh, I, I, I think a lot of the uh, content I'm responding to here is our, our positions he will take later on uh, as to a more kind of Gnostic, God does not exist atheism. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just uh, start with what I printed out uh, uh, half an hour ago. The Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy states, in philosophy at least, atheism should be construed as the proposition that God does not exist, or more broadly, the proposition that there are no gods. As such, atheism represents a truth claim, end quote. As such, atheism represents a truth claim, and truth claims incur a burden of proof Contrary to received atheist folk wisdom, the burden of proof admits of no exceptions, not for negative claims, non extraordinary claims, or default positions, however one may choose to define those terms. Now, at this point, many contemporary atheists demur, claiming that their atheism is not the strong atheism of one who asserts, as a matter of fact, that God does not exist, but rather theirs is the weak atheism, the lack of belief atheism they presumably share with babies, raccoons, and tree stumps. In my back and forth with the moderator about the topic of this debate, I made it clear that I had no interest in debating whether lack of belief atheism is the default position, since to grant the possibility that a default position could be a non-position or an absence of a position would be to set the debate on a nonsensical foot. If Randolph Richardson's atheism means only Randolph Richardson lacks a belief in God, all I have to say is I agree, Randolph Richardson does lack a belief in God, and there's no basis for debate since there's no disagreement. Moreover, the definition of atheism as the absence of a belief or the absence of a position would fail to account for commonly encountered atheist assumptions of the improbability of God's existence or the irrationality of theistic belief, which are the hallmarks of the adversarial brand of uh, internet atheism. All this having been said, I have an evidential belief in God. I believe the existence of God can and must be supported by good reasons. I trust you will find my attitude reflects that of the entirety of Christian apologists and the majority of Christians as a whole. The idea that a person should be compelled to believe in God unless God's existence is disproven is anathema to my way of thinking. By the same token, the idea that a person should be compelled to disbelieve in God until God's existence is proven is similarly anathema to my way of thinking, and it's not because I don't have evidence. In my experience, when an atheist demands evidence of God from you, they will swat away your justifications for theism with facile objections and one-liners, and then expect you to default to their preferred assumption. To call an argument from ignorance is to sell short the atheist offenses to reason. An argument from ignorance is when a debater expects his opponent to accept his preferred premise in the absence of opposing evidence. Atheists, on the other hand, expect their opponents to accept their preferred premises after evidence has already been provided, but they personally are not convinced. In my experience, to accept the premise that God doesn't exist until atheists are persuaded by the evidence otherwise is to accept the premise that God doesn't exist full stop because atheists refuse on principle to be, pers to be persuaded by any evidence. I'm sorry, but atheist refusal to be persuaded by evidence of God doesn't entail a compulsion for me to accept their preferred assumptions as true, just as a flat earther's refusal to be persuaded by evidence of a round earth doesn't entail a compulsion for me to accept their preferred assumptions is true. I'm going to uh, skip this part. Atheists will often invo uh, invoke the null hypothesis of scientific methodology or the innocent until proven guilty presumption of in innocence in American jurisprudence to support their claim that negative claims are the default position or that negative claims bear no burden of proof. Both these analogies fail for reasons that I will be happy to explain in the body of this debate. And I have other stuff written here that I'll skip. Lastly, uh, is the matter of the of the intellectual cowardice of flinging arrows at an opponent from an undefined in, uh, intellectual position, or taking a, a superior, condescending attitude towards them, and then when challenged to justify your own beliefs, denying that you have any beliefs to defend. To Randolph Richardson and to all atheists who cower behind the notion of atheism as the default position, I ask you, please, have the cards of your convictions. I went a little uh, adversarial at the end there. I, 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 I kind of mis misjudged the tenor of this debate, but uh, well, that's okay. that concludes my that's opening statement. Cool. <laughs> that's fine.
thank you very much, gentlemen, for those uh, those short and pithy, very fun opening statements. We'll now get rocking and rolling into the open discussion. And so I just love the the internet allows us to do so many things, and it, it allows us to bring people totally different perspectives. And so uh, together from across the world, in some cases. So with that, gentlemen, we are thrilled to hear your open discussion. Thanks again. Well, first of all, I'm going to take issue with the uh, with the assertion that uh, atheists hold a superior attitude. In my opening statement, I did mention that uh, belief in a deity does require a minimum level of intelligence. Atheism doesn't have such a requirement. So what I'm actually arguing here is based on the idea that um, theism does require a superior level of intelligence. I think uh, there may have been a, a misread on, on my approach on this. <laughs> so so you would you would agree with the proposition that a tree stump is an atheist if you want to include atheists if you want to include tree stumps into the uh, uh, classification of uh, not believing in deities then I guess so I, I don't see it as very useful for this debate because I think we're talking about uh, when uh, uh, people are born what is the default but okay it could be used in that way i i don't really use it in that way there are some people who do i believe bionic dance is one who's examined this and accepted it and, and i don't really have an objection to it i just don't see the relevancy okay well well i i think the the it becomes problematic uh to any degree you you kind of extend it like i said as i said in my opening remarks if, if, if randolph richardson's atheism is simply a randolph richardson uh lacks a belief in god there, there's no basis for debate at that point. I agree. I agree with that claim. I have no reason to believe that what you state about what you uh, say about your own mental state is inaccurate. So oh, I, hope not, I, hope I, not, I hope you're not trying to get out of this debate because it no. sound like that. <laughs> um, when, when you say lack of belief, um, I, I do take issue with with calling it a lack because I, I, I feel that lack implies that there's something that's normally missing. I, I normally use the word absence because it's more neutral from my understanding. Um, and I mean it in the neutral sense of the term that it's it's not something that replaces a position. I, I, I quite uh, clearly view atheism as, as a classification of not believing in deities and anti-theism as the position that there are no deities and theism that there's a position that there is at least one or more deities. They're all, those are anti-theism and theism would be opposites on the uh, belief position spectrum. As far as the Stanford Encyclopedia is concerned, um, the philosophy, it does ignore linguistic structure. It does ignore anti-theism, doesn't even define it. Um, and it is esoteric within their circles of philosophy. Um, I find that uh, the, the term atheism does uh, is polysemic, uh, polysemous, so it has multiple meanings. It, it is used in, in different ways. And because it's used in different ways, I look at what is the fundamental um, uh, on, in the meaning of this. And, and fundamentally, where everything gravitates toward with the term atheism is just that not believing in deities. It's, it, the other things are valid uses as well. But uh, fundamentally, it is just simply not believing in deities. And when we're talking about um, when, uh, when we're born, whether we believe in something or not, I, I think that it makes sense to discuss fundamentals of these definitions as well, because we're talking about the fundamentals of life here. Okay, well, well, uh, do you mind if I kind of table that for the time being? Because no problem. If you want to get back to it later, anytime's fine with me. Yeah, so you said something about linguistic structure. Are you talking about the, the etymology of the word atheism itself? Uh, well, I did mention etymology separately as well. Um, linguistic structure is uh, you have prefixes, for example, the anti-prefix denotes opposition, opposition, whereas the a prefix uh, denotes absence or without something. And um, that's uh, the linguistic structure. The etymology just happens to, uh, to, to work with that and be consistent with that. Oh, okay, well, you are, you are aware that, that atheism is actually a, I mean, theism rather, is actually a back formation of atheism. The, well, the term, that. term theism was coined centuries after the word atheism, where, where atheism was coined from the Greek atheos, which was yeah. godlessness. So it, it is 
technically it is the ism of godlessness rather than the lack of theism. So that is actually the etymology. Actually, the French language did clarify that they got it from the Greek language, and they introduced atheism uh, approximately 80 years, if I recall correctly, before introducing uh, uh, theism to the language. And then from there is where English got it, and uh, the French are very clear about it. So, so I think that, hold on one second, forgive me. Um, I think that Randolph, it's a, if you're able to speak up just a little bit louder, and then deflating, if you're... Um, able to push your mic just a little bit further. <laughs> Sorry, I'm basically I'm splitting the difference because the gain on your uh, mic is probably a little higher deflating, and so I'm trying to so you're a little bit louder. My mic was on the table. I've got it in my hand now. Is this better? Yeah, much better, much better. Okay, definitely. Thank you. So, um, but I do look at that um, with the uh, with the Greek having atheism be the a i see it as a prefix uh, that is how it is commonly defined that is how it is laid out uh in the etymology as well so that's consistent with the linguistic structure and so that's what i'm going with and that's what most of the world seems to be going with we see a lot of different dictionary definitions and a competitor to stanford's encyclopedia of philosophy is the internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy, which does side with this as well. So it's interesting. Stanford's not alone. Stanford's got uh, Stanford. Stanford has an adversary in this. Well, well, what is what is convenient for uh, for internet uh, keyboard warriors may not may not be the most useful for for debate. You know. Yeah. Uh, this is. Uh, okay, so jeez. Uh, but I can tell you this: if you want to say that. Um, an anti-theistic attitude that there's a belief that there are no deities, I would use the same reasoning. I'd be on your side on that one. Um, I think it applies equally to uh, being born with a belief in God is equally as credible as being born with a belief that there is no God. Uh, I don't believe either of them. Okay, well, well, I would say that you don't have, you don't accept the, the majority, the consensus of view of the definition of anti-theism either. I would say it is the belief that that religion is harmful to society, or that belief in God is harmful to society. Yeah, again, we're getting into polysemous uh, wording here, and uh, definitely there are a lot of anti-theists who, who do define it that way as well. And some of them have been recently changing to using the term anti-religious. Okay. Okay. For for but that, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just trying to elaborate on on your point here. I, I would say like strong atheism would I think perhaps be be a clearer term. Now now, do you mind if I I, I just kind of grill you on on, on yeah sure questions? And, I'm and not afraid of anything. Is the wrong that? answers, and I'd, I'd have nothing. But uh, uh, do you think do you think uh, in in your opinion, yeah, is is God's existence uh, let's say the 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 kind of generalized uh, uh, you know first cause of Aristotle. Let's say, do you, or, or however you know in in the theism in the most uh, general sense, you think that God uh, most likely does not exist or most likely does exist? Yeah, in terms of probability. probability. I actually haven't. Um, been able to take a position on it because uh, from the standpoint of skepticism and critical thinking, I don't have enough information. Uh, I haven't been able to, I, I don't have the tools necessary to, uh, for example, to explore the entire universe, in fact, the entire cosmos, for that matter, to, uh, to validate this either way. You might you might just like kick the legs out of my whole argument. Okay, so okay. Uh, let me ask you another question. Do you believe concession that, accepted? <laughs> do you believe that theism is irrational? Is theism irrational? I think that the problem with that question is that it is formed on the basis of the black and white fallacy. Uh, I'm not meaning that you're committing a fallacy. I mean that the question itself is fallacious because there are many rational and irrational aspects to religions. So it's it's hard to say. I can't say the whole thing is rational and I can't say the whole thing is irrational. So I do think that when it comes to believing in a deity, though, that um, people are taking it on faith. They're taking it as something that they're some are relying on Pascal's wager and, and doing it as a gamble, in fact. Um, I'm sure you, you're probably familiar with that. Um, there's, um, 
so what I would want to look at is more on an individual basis and, and find out why is it that somebody believes that? Does the reason seem to make sense? I would say that somebody who's using Pascal's wager, even though I think Pascal's wager is defective and, uh, and an attempt at manipulating uh, uh, the populace, um, I think that if somebody is using that, um, they're, they're attempting to be making a rational decision. And, and that, to me, I don't consider that irrational. But if somebody is saying, okay, they took some mushrooms and they, uh, they had a conversation with God and now God is ordering them to go and kill a bunch of children, okay, that's irrational. So it really depends on what the reason is behind it. And there's lots of different reasons people believe, I think. Okay, well, I, I mean, you know, that's not necessary to answer the question. I mean, I could ask you, you know, you know are, are, are all cats gray? The answer to that question is no. You don't have to say, well, my neighbor had this cat, and, you know. Oh, just, it, is theism irrational, just taken as a whole? I, it doesn't sound like you can answer that question. In the well, I, um, I don't have to explore the entire cosmos to determine that all cats are not gray. <laughs> The, the problem with the, the deity question is that uh, the deity is often defined as, or pretty much always defined as a supernatural being who is outside of nature. And the claims that go with it are very often, you can't measure it, you can't detect it because it's outside of nature. But then there's also people claiming that this deity uh, intervenes in various things in reality. So anything I would think on principle that can intervene with reality we should be able to test that and, and, or at least detect that or be able to observe it somehow. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, you're, you're adding a lot of stuff to the question. If I could kind of jump to a different topic, which sorry is, about that. I didn't mean evidence to. of God's existence. Well, I was asking you about, about the rationality of theism, but so yeah, I, I can't say, I think, uh, I think that's a gray area. I, I don't think there's a straightforward yes or no answer to uh, theism being rational. Okay, now now we'll, now we'll hop onto a different line of questioning. Sorry. <laughs> so you are the president of Canadian Atheists, and yeah, you I founded this organization. Yes. Oh, I, I imagine that you you clawed your way to the top. Uh, uh you know, climbing over the bodies of, of all the defeated uh, Canadian atheists, and finally you're the king of the mountain uh, after <laughs> many decades of struggling to the top of. Can so what exactly? We're, we're not. We haven't been around that long, but okay. uh, it's. So, uh, it sounds like the plot for a fantastic movie. <laughs> Cheers. So, if if atheism is a lack of a belief, and you're not going to commit to the to to the premise that God most probably does not exist, and you're not going to commit to the premise that theism is necessarily irrational, what exactly are you guys doing up there uh, besides tapping maple trees? <laughs> What 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 is the what is the rate what is the uh, uh, you know raison d'être of, of your organization? Then? Well, our our primary concerns are um, that there there are a lot of people who are uh, vilifying atheists just for being atheists, which we think is wrong, and it is a violation of our constitution here in Canada, particularly our Charter of Rights and Freedoms. You should uh, have read my first draft of the opening statement. I'm kidding. Well, send it to me. I'll take a look later. <laughs> Um, so we're concerned about that. We're, we're concerned about um, uh, legislation uh, when people try to bring in legislation that uh, favors religion. You know, in, um, in the U.S., you have in your constitution that you can't pass laws um, uh, favoring a religion. But here in Canada, our laws are structured a bit differently. We do have freedom of religion. Um, we are a secular nation, and um, that means, which I think is good for everybody, um, because it, it also protects the rights of religious people as well as non-religious people, and uh, and that's very important to defend. One uh, a fellow uh, a number of years ago here uh, did start a uh, petition with our government to remove some anti-blasphemy laws, and that uh, so I participated in that, and this is before we started the organization, but. Um, there was, uh, there is, this has always been kind of an interest to me. And so I've started this organization to bring like-minded people together who also uh, uh, want to, uh, want to get rid of this vilification and uh, make it, we want to normalize atheism. We want it to be that people will feel comfortable saying, 
just saying openly without making a big deal about it that, hey, I just don't believe in deities and not get attacked for it, not get vilified for it. We don't have, I think, as much conflict here in Canada um, uh, compared to in the US where there seems to be people get a lot more into the heated arguments on these matters. Um, but you know, there, there still is a quite a degree of it here um, that is somewhat significant that I think um, we've got a good opportunity right now to, to bring an end to it a lot more easily than say maybe 10 years from now if we allow it to fester. Okay. We're also promoting some other things like donating blood and, and whatnot and uh, these kind of things that are helpful to humanity. So that, that sort of stuff. And, and, and by the way, uh, people can join this organization. There's no requirement to be an atheist to join. Anybody can join. Well, you kind of, you kind of preempted my, my, my comment because I was about to say that, that you know, freedom, freedom to, to freedom of religion, anti-blasphemy laws, you could be a religious person and be against, I'm against anti, I, I'm against anti-blasphemy laws. Yeah, if you so, want to draw so, the hand. If you want to draw a picture of Muhammad, you have that right as, as a, in freedom of expression. Yeah, I still wouldn't do it, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> yep. So I am I am for uh, opposing anti black I am for uh, blood drives. So why, why are you arbitrarily uh, uh, narrowing the, the appeal of your group then? If you have if you have uh, if if you have these causes that that are, could potentially appeal to a much wider swath of people. We're not narrowing anything. Um, things are actually quite wide open. What we're concerned about is that uh, people are trying to limit our rights as atheists. And that's what we're trying to primarily put a stop to. But you know, having these other uh, programs is good too because uh, people want to be part of organizations that do things that they consider to be helpful to society. And so uh, the, the encouragement of people to, for example, donate blood is, is showing, uh, I think, some leadership to say, hey, here's something you can do to actually be a positive contributor to the community. And this counters some of the vilification that people will say, oh, atheists don't ever donate anything. Atheists are selfish. Atheists are greedy, all these kinds of things. So uh, it, it kind of plays into that a little bit as well. And it's also, you know, we, we have a, a membership. And if we can encourage them to do things that are helpful to society, I think we should do that. Uh, by the way, we also specifically don't ask for tax exempt status. <laughs> <laughs> I, was going, I was going to I was going to make a joke there but yeah yeah please do I like I like good humor <laughs> any percent of zero is still zero Ooh, okay that hurts <laughs> well um yeah so geez uh so you you are do not you do not you specifically do not exclude non non-atheists from your organization that's right. We couldn't if we wanted to anyway, because the, but we don't want to exclude. But our, our, our Charter of Rights and Freedoms has uh, under Section 15 um, non-discrimination. It is illegal for an organization here to discriminate pe against people based on all sorts of different things, sex, race, age, and uh, uh, different things like that, um, including whether or not they believe uh, they follow a religion and uh, if they're associated with a particular group. So um, actually, it was our intention not to exclude anyway. It just happens to be that our, our laws are also consistent with that. Yes, uh, James, uh, do you have anything to, to add here? Thank you very much, gentlemen. And regarding the particular, uh, I had never thought about, it strangely never crossed my mind. It could be interpreted that today's debate title means either, like from an epistemic standpoint, what is the default for like just grown adults? You know, so you say like, well, you know, where should you be? Like, is there a default such that you should say like, I don't know, I'm like 50, 50 on whether there's a God. I'm just like zero. I assign, you know, like, or, you know, very small probability to the possibility of a God, or maybe the question could also be interpreted as like, what's the default in terms of human nature? Namely, are we born such that we're just atheists or theists? And then are we eventually kind of taught one or the other, something like that? Uh, 
I'm it's actually interested in deflating atheism's um, uh, argument for uh, why it is somebody would be born believing in a deity, and because uh, I, I think that's your position, and if I understand correctly, actually, actually, no, it is not. But you you can find oh. some you can find some words for it in in the social uh, in the social sciences. Uh, I have a uh, call up here on Amazon. Uh, the, the book uh, Born Believers, The Science of Ch Children's Religious Belief by, by Justin L. Barrett. And uh, he describes uh, a, a tendency towards, towards some form of spirituality and, and you know, in particular, some, some form of theistic belief that, that seems to be a near universal. Now, obviously, not all those kids, as you note, end up as Christians. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, obviously, a, a, a substantial position a substantial percentage of the world's population belongs to some sort of monotheist faith but uh it's it's certainly uh intuitively we could say well if that's the case there might be some sort of innate reason for it and and this man actually subjects that that kind of intuition to a to a kind of scientific methodology there there's a, another question uh where where i kind of hinted at at my comments I actually wrote more than i actually said where if, if I were to press you, or if I were to press most lack of belief atheists on the issue, they would conclude, at the very least, that God's existence is more improbable than it is probable. So that, that is a, a, a truth claim, and as such does, does incur a burden of proof. Yeah, I, I don't have enough information for that. However, um, your book, the book that you're referencing, talking about people coming to that conclusion, um, I'd be interested to know uh, if it covers uh, the Paraha people in the Amazon who don't even have uh, words in their language to describe uh, deities or spirits, apparently. There was uh, some kind of a, uh, a Catholic or a Christian priest of some sort who went there uh, a long time ago to visit with them and tried to bring them the word of God, and they they laughed at it, and they just, they just didn't go for it at all. Uh, I think this makes a compelling case for being a counterexample, at least, to what the book is uh, um, presenting. Well, if, if you are a, a, a religious missionary and you go uh, to some foreign land and to some uncontacted tribe and you try to spread the word and they laugh at you, I think you got off pretty easy. A lot, <laughs> a lot of people, of people have darts thrown at them. I'd rather be laughed at to be to be. Oh, well, you're you're thinking what happened in India recently, aren't you? Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah yeah there, that, that fellow who went on to that island uh it's an isolated tribe and uh was warned even by the people he paid in the black market to bring him there they said don't do this and he went and did yeah. it and got shot and killed it's yeah like, wow he has all the warnings and still insists he's going to do it anyway that's uh that's a lot of determination there and this to me seems to be one of the uh, irrational sides of religion where people are getting um, so convinced that the ideas are right and more important than people and uh, their the priorities are, are going off. I, I do think that people are more important than ideas. Well, it's, it's, it's not a function of it's not a function of believing that your ideas are right. It's, it's right. about the, the practicality of kind of disseminating those views. It's how that person's practicing it, of course. However, I don't think one can deny that that person was uh, majorly influenced by their religion in doing that. Well, well, the problem is, is that it, it, there's not really much of a, a secular analog. It seems that not many, not many uh, atheists would be willing to to die for their beliefs, uh, even without the, the the promise of some sort of an afterlife or something. And the, the lady who started the uh, American Atheists, um, she, was, uh, she was killed over that. Uh, I, By atheists? Um, I think it was a Christian who killed her, wasn't it? Oh, Madeline Murray O'Hare? No, she, yeah. she, she was killed by people within her or, own organization. That's a very different story than what I've learned. Hmm. Well, they made a movie about it. Maybe you saw the movie. <laughs> yeah. My understanding is that somebody didn't like what she was doing, uh, promoting atheism, and uh, took her and I, I believe a couple of her family members or, or co-workers or something. And that is true. 
Yeah, and uh, basically uh, killed her for not believing in deities. But of no, course, no, no, really no. at that time, I don't know if it can be accurately reported either. But uh, it it sounds to me like that's that's pretty likely. Will forgive me just to jump in really quick to let everybody know if you have a question, fire that question into the live chat. If you tag me with at Modern Day Debate, it's more likely that I won't miss it. And we'll try to ask those immediately following the conversation as we'll probably go for a few more minutes yet. And then we will jump into the Q&A shortly as it's been an interesting one, a fun one. And I appreciate uh, we've kind of like run the gambit, different uh, topics. This is one that I had never heard of regarding the Madeline Marie O'Hare. Uh, I had never yeah. known she was apparently murdered. But uh, so, yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Anyway, I'll yeah, back to you guys. Time. It is a terrible, terrible incident. Um, you mentioned the uh, null hypothesis, uh, and you you classified it as a position. Like um, I'm thinking of it as more of an absence of position. It's everything's wide open. We're waiting for information. Um, uh, did you did you mean to classify it as a position? Well, well, I, I specifically brought it up uh, as something that that atheists invoke to to defend. Uh, their position that 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 atheism is is the null hypothesis or is to be assumed correct until they are convinced otherwise, and I, I avoid saying until evidence is presented because often they, they refuse to be convinced by evidence. But yes, uh, what, I, evidence? I'll, 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 what evidence? Oh well, that, that's that's a that's a that's a separate issue. But I will you know point first off to well, you that, made the point. The arguments is the most persuasive. <laughs> You can get to the five ways, you can get to the Kalam. I think those are all persuasive arguments. But as for the oh. null hypothesis, uh, that is a, that is a, a, a methodological uh, assumption. So you can't you can't scale that out to reality because what is what is uh, uh, what you assume in the context of a scientific experiment uh, is isn't always the the rational assumption. Let's say I'm replicating ex an experiment that's been done many times before with the same result. <laughs> so, which very rarely happens these days, but yeah. So uh, this uh, experiment has been replicated again and again and again. Oh, by the way, to the viewers at home, the null hypothesis is just the uh, is is just kind of the assumption that that uh, some sort of correlation between two observed uh, sets of phenomena does not exist. So you kind of fall back to the assumption that 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 a, a correlation between these these phenomena does not exist. And so atheists try to say God is somehow uh, analogous to this uh, non-existent uh, uh, correlative relationship. Already, they're, they're kind of stretching it there. They're kind of stretching it there, in my opinion. But yes, yeah, so let's say there's an experiment that has been replicated, has been replicated. I do it again. Now, what is the null hypothesis in that situation? Again, null hypothesis in every experimental situation is to assume that the correlation does not exist. But what is rational to assume in that case is that it does because the experiment has been done again and again and again with the same result. So yeah, I don't think it, I don't think it helps their case at all. I also, I also brought up uh, uh, the, the presumption of innocence too. That doesn't help them either. Presumption of innocence. Uh, you mean that is in, innocence until proven guilty in, in, in well, America. That's a courtroom standard. Yes, that's yeah. why I said American jurisprudence. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's, we have the same thing here in Canada. Yeah. So yeah. it's a, a common thing in uh, uh, modern civilization that values people's rights, and it's an important right too. Important. Yeah, right. it, it's based on kind of the the ethical principle that that it's better for for an, uh, an innocent, I mean, a guilty person to be free than an innocent person to be imprisoned. Yeah. So it's not, it's not an epistemic principle, it's, it's, it's an ethical principle. I agree with that. Um, since you're mentioning ethics, uh, what, uh, what is your view, I'm curious, on uh, atheism in society? Do you think it's a good thing? Do you think it's a problem? Do you think it's a bad thing? Uh, do you have some other kind of view on it? Uh, again, again you're, you're, you're asking a question with, with uh, a, lot of, a lot of qualification to be added. If, if a person... Okay. Is, is uh, an atheist like you, or what you what you uh, kind of advertise yourself to be here, which is the atheist who uh, you know concludes that God does not exist and then just rests his hands in his lap uh, in his easy chair and doesn't do anything about it. I mean, I have no problem with that. Uh, if, if if an atheist 
you know, concludes that God does not exist. And he goes on the internet and he calls uh, all, all, you know, Christians and religious and something and does all these horrible things. Yeah, I have a big problem. In fact, I think it's, it's poisonous. I think their influence on, on uh, discourse in general, particularly on the internet, has been poisonous over the last 15 years. So yeah, that stripe of atheism, which I think you will find uh, is a sizable, sizable majority of, of self-professed atheists, uh, I, I think their their influence has been very negative, to say the least. Just to be sure that your TV's not on fire, uh, you probably have a <laughs> candle behind your TV, right? Deflating atheism? Oh, those are just string lights. Yeah, my house is not on fire. <laughs> oh, okay. One of them looked like it was maybe flickering, but that's good. I'm yeah. glad to know. Yeah. And with that, that uh, safety message is a public service from James. Thank you, James. Yes. Hopefully everybody out there, we hope that your house is worth checking, you know, maybe look yeah. over your shoulder. Hopefully it's massively it's viral at that point. Yeah. I'd so, like to follow in a little bit more into this uh, poisonous influence that, that you've observed because uh, like, you know, my, my approach to things is these are just words on the screen in a way. Um, and the same argument is made with religious people. They're just words in a book. Um, there are um, uh, there are people who influence each other's thinking. Um, I think uh, what can help to counter that kind of uh, influence when somebody makes a bad statement, and, and I'll, I've even called out a few atheists who I thought were making some really bad statements before, but uh, mostly I'm I'm up against uh, religious people who are are making some grand claims about the universe and and whatnot, um, and sometimes quite bigoted comments about people. I think uh, critical thinking I think is something that should be taught more in the schools. If we have a population, a society where people are better at critical thinking, we can have. Um, people can have these kinds of discussions more freely and without having this kind of poisonous influence. Do you do you think that? Do you agree with that? I have no disagreements there. Okay, yeah. So can you give me an example of maybe one or two of the, uh, in particular, these kind of poisonous points that you're finding people are making? Well, I, I, I would say that, that for instance, uh, society would be better off without religion. I, I think that that is a, 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 an idea that has a, a murderous legacy throughout history. Murderous. Yes. Okay. So, so it sounds like you're saying that a society that has religion uh, won't have a problem with people being murderous. Am I understanding you correctly? <laughs> it is certainly not my position. Okay. So maybe you can clarify what you mean by uh, a society without religion is murderous. Maybe, maybe you can clarify what that you mean. That was never my claim. That was never my claim. Oh, I think I okay, what, what did you me. say? So, so sorry for jumping in really quick. Last one is I think there's maybe like a bumbling, uh, like a, yeah. is, is somebody have a mic that's maybe like dragging across their shirt or something like, uh, I feel like I can hear maybe like a, a mic that is like having something like brush up against it slightly. Maybe it's just my imagination. But it's him, Jacques. Jacques, it's Randolph. Poor, poor Randolph. Sorry, my microphone. <laughs> okay. Oh, yours. You've got. It looks like you've got a nice mic over there. I don't. I've got a Yeti. Be surprised if it'd be yours. Yeah, Yeti. A blue Yeti. Pretty darn nice. It's black, but it's called a blue Yeti. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it looks sharp. All right. Sorry about that. Go ahead, you guys. I'm so sorry. Stand. Yeah, put it in the mic stand. So, it sounds like from what you were saying that. Um, it almost like you were possibly implying that a society needs religion. Were you saying that? Uh, I well, that is that is something I would agree to in, in general, but that's that was not my position in the case. What I said was the idea, the anti, what I would call an anti-theistic idea that society uh, would be better off without religion, or that is it is necessary for society be, to be without religion. I, I should say uh, does have a a. a murderous influence in our history and you could see that uh through the reign of terror through the red terror through the ussr through you know korea whatever you know albania so Any, anywhere where, the, where this idea has taken root uh, uh the the result has been uh, piles of, of thousands of thousands well of thousands let's look at let's let's take a look at north korea then uh, i assume it's north korea you're referring to yes so you're saying is it your position that they don't have religion there uh well i i <laughs> i think yeah they, they basically outlawed uh, uh almost all forms of 
of religion, except, except for the state-sanctioned religion, which uh, uh, is kind of atheistic, yes. Um, my understanding of the North Korean uh, uh, leadership there, or, which I like to refer to ownership, actually, um, is that they have, um, they actually, uh, they regard their, uh, the current leader's father as a deity, and they did as a living, living deity before while he was alive. That sounds like, that doesn't sound like an atheistic religion to me. That sounds like a belief in a deity. And well, I mean, you could arbitrarily redefine anything to, to, uh, uh, to be a deity. I mean, you could say the, the Egyptians worshipped cats. I mean, therefore, uh, uh, you know, if, if, if you're an atheist, that means that you don't believe in cats. There are, people, there are people in the world who still worship cats today. Yes. <laughs> but that's a different matter. Um, I think so, yes, I, I mean, uh, I, I believe in the existence of, of Kim Il-sung. So, yes, I, I guess. Okay. Uh, I'm not... Yeah, yeah. So, but, but calling it a state religion, I think, is, uh, is a point that, that, uh, that shows that, you know, there, there is, uh, as a, that I agree with, they, they have this idea, you have to pray to this leader, and uh, he is a deity who will make it rain, and uh, so your crops will grow better, and things like that. And there's uh, uh, this kind of going on. This this is a religion, as you said, state-sanctioned religion. And I think um, there's an example of uh, a society with religion um, that isn't doing so well. Well, well, that, that's why I kind of qualified at the beginning when I talked about theism is that there there's a, a very distinct through line in Western thought. Um, you know, we could start from from the Aristotelian uh, idea of the first first cause or whatever. It goes through the kind of Abrahamic faiths, and you could argue about some of the details. But there is a through line in kind of Western thought about what uh, God would be. Okay. So yeah. that that is why when I say when we have these arguments about about theism or atheism, mm -hmm. that is kind of what I'm referring to. And when I ask you questions like, is theism rational or irrational? I'm talking about that thing. I'm not talking about any one particular subset of that belief. Okay. So and I, don't, I don't think you could honestly qualify, uh, you know, uh, various, various, you know, uh, belief structures that, that might kind of use the word God, whether mm -hmm. it's, it, it's uh, North Korean, uh, their belief system yeah. or whatever 5% nation of Islam where, where, you know, you know, people on earth are the gods. I'm not, are all disqualified as far as I'm concerned if they don't believe in, in a transcendent uh, uh, first cause uh, creator and designer of the world. Also well, to you that's the uh, uh, those are the um, the characteristics that make a religion legitimate. I never said that. No that's why I'm ask I'm asking you a question and I'm asking you to clarify. No no uh, again this is this is a question for for sociologists to okay. answer really because I mean you you could get into that debate. I could say, you know, it's a chair if it has four legs. Well, this chair is three legs. This chair is up on the wall. We can have that debate. It's not really one I'm particularly interested in, you know? Okay. Okay. I'm just trying to understand your thinking better. Um, that, that, that's the whole purpose of that question there. So, yeah. Um, you, know, you mentioned uh, some characteristics of the deity there being transcendent and being the creator of, uh, we'll call it 42, life, the universe, and everything. By the same token, by the same token, uh, a person can believe in a deity and not be religious, like I was for many years. Yep, I believe that's true. in generic theism while not adhering to any given religion. So yes, uh, uh, there is uh, neither one necessitates the other. Okay. Yeah, they seem to work quite well together, but I, I agree with you. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Yeah, they don't. Uh, they're they're independent things. A religion and a and a belief in deities, theism, are, are definitely yes. different things. O overlapping, but a, a non yeah. congruent sense. Yes, they 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 work well together. <laughs> it's like yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, did you have some other questions for me? I guess uh... if, if it has to come, if the, if the conversation has to end soon, I actually think that point of agreement would be a good time to do it. Yes. Uh, I was. I, I have to admit, I was a, a little disappointed that you would not. Uh, you would not commit to to uh, certain positions, but but I kind of feel like if if I kept pressing you on certain things, I, I would encounter a contradiction where you actually do proclaim these things. You know, I, I find that 
typical of many atheists, that they would disavow making this claim, but you find in practice that they actually do think, okay, well, you know, God is very likely not to exist, or, 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 or you know, theists uh, in general are, are overwhelmingly irrational in their beliefs. Oh, I, ne never mind uh, further claims like, like you know, the, the, the world is fundamentally material, you know, further claims like that. Okay, I, um, I think it's important to, to give uh, honest and straightforward answers as much as possible. So if I'm not committing to something, it's because I can't, because I don't honestly have a position on it either way. Okay. That's, what, okay. That, that's why it's like that. It's, it's, uh, and that, that's the reason for that, uh, out of respect for you, of course, uh, as well. Okay, well, what people say and what people actually believe are not always the same thing. So I'm not, I'm not I agree. second guessing you there, but but often this does come out in debate, you know. Yeah, and that that's what the great thing about debate is because we can learn more from it and uh, and uh, be, be exposed to more ideas and whatnot. And yeah, the free exchange of ideas, I like to call it. I like to encourage that, and that's why I'm delighted you're you're here. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank yeah. you. I'm, yeah. del I'm delighted to, with my with my. Uh, well, Canadians are delightful in general. Oh, <laughs> well. I can I can uh, say thank you very much. Uh, not all, but uh, many of us, I guess, are. <laughs> I, again, in the, in, the, in, the, in the much more adversarial version of this debate, I, I had uh, kind of pictured in my mind I was I was going to be deflating Canadians, but yes, I did not. <laughs> hey, we're, we're happy for any attention we get. We're, we're all delighted that we got even you got a place in South Park a few times. <laughs> so. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> if you guys are ready, we can jump into the Q and A. Sure, yeah, let's do that. Excellent, stoked. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, been a pleasure. Thank you guys. Love listening to you guys. And now we will jump right into these folks. So if you have questions, fire them in the live chat. Can't guarantee we'll get to them as we've got a good list already. But here we go. I want to ask you a bunch of questions. I want to have them answered immediately. First up, thanks so much, Stephen Steen, for your super chat. He says the only default is James's smile, and this doesn't even make sense. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, thanks, Stephen. I, I, I think someone has a crush. I think someone has a crush. Nasty. Yeah, there was a comment early up in the chat that uh, it's probably the same person. Yeah. You got to look out for that guy. Really uh, nasty guy. So, uh, he's. I heard he's got like tons of pictures. Who is it? Gary Busey? He's like his room is covered with pictures of Gary Busey. I don't know. But thanks for your super chat. Your other one, Stephen Steen, he says, uh, what version of atheism is default? Uh, OK, so I think he's saying like lack of theism or positive assertion that there is no God. He's asking I, which is the default. Well, can, can I take that since I, I propose the topic? Uh, I, I think uh, and I'll follow up. A atheist, I think, uh, internet atheists or something, uh, will define both versions as, as as the default, and they might they might profess uh, the lack of belief atheism, but what they believe in practice is, is God does not exist atheism. But they they will kind of imply that both are the default position and are to be assumed correct until they are convinced otherwise. Yeah, that that sounds a bit. Uh like you you've run into some people who have some pretty strong views on things uh to put it nicely um the uh, uh definitely i would say the default is that where there's no um uh the absence of belief in deities is there and and i think you even kind of agreed with that you were looking forward to having more of a a position against another opposite position kind of debate here um as you'd mentioned but the interesting thing that I think a lot of people get confused about is they try to think it's all one thing and they, they ignore the fact that somebody who does take the position that there are no deities also is, as a matter of consequence, an atheist by simply not believing it. If you're, if you're believing that there are no deities, you are, as, uh, as a matter of consequence, you also don't believe in deities. You, you fit that classification as well. Um, but that classification doesn't reciprocate to the anti-theistic viewpoint. I, um, I agree. I agree. That would, that would be the fallacy of composition, yes. Yeah. Per, sorry, fallacy of composition, is that? Yes. 
Yeah, 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 exactly. I agree. Very good, good catch. <laughs> so, so, uh, since, since you say not everything is black or white, I have a question for you. Yes. This morning, this morning I was scrambling eggs. I, I just, when I'm scrambling eggs, I'm just in the zone. I'm just, I block out the entire world because I'm just so focused on this task of scrambling eggs. Oh, that's I, terrific. I just relish that task of scrambling eggs. In fact, I was so invested in the act of scrambling eggs, I was not thinking about God. Nowhere in the time of scrambling eggs, I did not give one single thought about God. Mm-hmm. Was I an atheist when I was scrambling eggs? <laughs> What do you think? No, I'm not going to pull the psychiatrist rune on you. Using, using, your, using your lack of belief definition, I would say, yes, I was an atheist when I was scrambling eggs. So I think this is an interesting point because we're, we've gotten into a, a, a fascinating philosophical point with this. The underlying message here is that belief in anything does require effort. Um, not believing in something doesn't require extra effort normally, unless I guess you're up against people who are telling you you should believe, and then you're making a choice not to believe. Uh, And that's a possibility too. But I think I would say that because you have proclaimed to me that, that that you, like I, that you believe in a deity, Um, you, um, even when you're not thinking about it, this is your personal characteristic. This belongs to you. This is who you are. As soon as you finish the the task that requires your full attention, you're going back to who you are. That hasn't changed. Scrambling the eggs hasn't changed that. That's just something that you've put your full attention on temporarily. And I I don't think that that would really overall change the fact that you're a theist. Um, and I and I think it would be insulting if I was to say, yeah, you were an atheist temporarily there. I will say, however, that being an atheist does not uh, speak for atheism, at least. There is no minimum period of time that you have to not believe in deities to qualify as an atheist. And I think that's the case for many religions as well. Okay, so your position is that a baby is an atheist. We come out of the womb as atheists. Oh, yeah. I, I think, knowledge. Yeah, I think that we just don't have any beliefs. We, we develop those as we, as along with our brain developing. When we're two years old, we can uh, believe in some simple concepts. When we're 10 years old, we can believe in more complex concepts. And in our early 20s, we're, we're uh, doing dissertations to get a PhD and, and on and on. It gets more and more. Our capabilities are higher. I haven't done that, but I, I've heard many really people. Awesome YouTube very channels, yeah. Sorry? Just have really awesome YouTube channels. So now I'm yeah. going to, I'm going to Good keep example. pressing. I'm going to keep pressing. So, so a baby comes out of the womb as an atheist, to, to the best of your knowledge. And yep. then when they get so old, uh, their parents start to talk to them about God. It sounds good to them. The, the world has a creator and a designer. Sure, it sounds good to them. So then they become what you would call a theist. So yep. how is that period of lacking a belief in God not comparable to my lack of belief in God when I'm scrambling eggs? You could, you could say that there's a, there's a continuity there, just like there's a continuity when, when I went from being actively believing in God to scrambling eggs to actively believing in God. Two things. You're a theist before you started scrambling eggs. You have no intention of changing that while you're scrambling the eggs. And if I were to interrupt you and and yank that frying pan away. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. (laughs) You might ask God for help to rain down on me something awful. (laughs) There you go. But um, it is, uh, I think it's important to take in consideration what a person is beforehand, um, before they're engaged in activity. So when somebody passes away, for example, and they are a theist, um, I think as a matter of their right to intellectual integrity and bodily integrity, et cetera, is similar to that, um, that I think it's quite reasonable to say, here's a person who's died, um, a theist who died, and so we know them as having been a theist in their last moments forevermore they 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 fit that classification that, that's, 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 that's extremely gracious of you in america once they die they call them democrats <laughs> next up oh boy. to jump to more questions <laughs> excuse me i've got a like few more questions if you don't mind 
First up, uh, thanks, Dwayne Burke, for your question in Super Chat. They said, how can a baby lack belief based upon a lack of evidence when they can't even comprehend evidence, let alone comprehend a God proposition? Because atheism is not a proposition. Atheism is a classification of not believing in deities. I also uh, like to just kind of go back to the, the previous question a little bit too, um, because um, I think um, the point, I, I don't know if I made this point, but um, yeah, you were talking about uh, a child becoming a, uh, a theist because their parents taught them about God and whatnot. I think that's a very common thing. And, and the little point I just want to touch on there was that children as they're growing up very young they try to do everything they can to please the adults who rule their world so if their reason for believing in a deity is because somebody told them to versus because they came to that conclusion that they should believe that on their own accord which one is better i would think that somebody who's made that determination for themselves um, instead of being uh, convinced by a salesperson or or a parent or somebody who has a lot of influence on them, I think somebody who genuinely has come up to that on their own has probably is more genuinely uh, has the better reason for it. Uh, do you what what is your thought on that? Well, I, I think you're kind of putting on your psychologist beanie there. So I, I mean, I, I I don't you know this is a question that could be you know studied psychologically or sociologically. But my my own position is that is that uh, the the idea that the unit that the world has a creator and designer is not a counterintuitive concept, and that that's why I say is that they can glide very easily without any sort of parental coercion in, into into this idea that that God exists because they may not have thought about it before, but it's a, it's an idea. Once you hear it, it's possible that once you hear an idea, it sounds like a good idea to you, and there's no there's no back and forth there. It oh, that makes sense to me, so I'll accept it. If I come charging in, uh, into your into your uh, uh, yo know, in your room and say, oh wow, there's this really cool red car outside. You have to come out and see this red car. You're probably going to assume that there is a red car outside. You know, I'm not lying to you. Yeah. Until you encounter a reason to believe I'm lying to you, you're going to trust that that there's a red car outside. I so have. I have a high percentage of confidence in something like that. And if somebody comes along and tells me they believe in a deity, okay, I'm usually not going to disagree with that. Now, if somebody comes along and tells me they're a Christian, I'm generally going to believe that too, unless they're dressed up in Muslim <laughs> or traditional outfit, then I might have some questions. But um, yeah, I think what my point I'm trying to allude to is really, it boils down to the reason why somebody is a theist. Why do they believe? Like, what is the reason? Did they, uh, did, are they just following somebody else and doing that? Or are they believing it because they have some actual reasons to justify that? And I think that's an important thing to consider um, when talking about these kinds of things. Why do you believe that? And, and I, I do not uh, disagree that the former can be the case. I think that there are probably a lot of people who are, who are sleepwalking through their religious belief. I don't, I don't deny that at all. But to get to the, to the person who asked us the question, we're giving very long answers here. Uh, it, Randolph never actually said that, that a person lacks a belief because of a lack of evidence. You never said that a person lacks a belief of, of you know, that yeah, I'm not, necessitates, you know, because of a lack of evidence. Uh, yeah, there, there's no no dependency on skepticism there. Um, there is, uh, however, um, there are many atheists I know who do use that as justification. So they are taking their absence of belief as a position instead of just something that flows in naturally like I do. Yes, well, the, that that there is a lack of evidence is itself a very uh, contentious claims, but we'll, we'll kind of yep. not talk about that right there now. <laughs> Gotcha. Next up, thanks for your super chat from our good friend, Fourth Dimensional Jake. Appreciate it. They said, we are born tabla rosa, therefore we are not born atheist, nor are we born theist. We are born non-theist. To conflate atheist with non-theist is wrong. Okay, so actually what's happening there, that question is 
is conflating uh, terminology. The uh, uh, atheism actually means not theist, not believing in deities, absence of theism, absence of belief in deities. The, uh, um, they're probably uh, thinking of the terms kind of more of an anti-theistic attitude, taking a position that there are no deities. Gotcha. Uh, again, I would highly dispute the the etymology there. I think if, if you I know you do. etymology, it, uh, atheism is the is the ism is the belief system of, of of godlessness rather than the absence of theism. There's a uh, website that I've put together called defineatheism.com, and I get into all that in great detail, including the etymology, including references that some of which are academic, and uh, uh, and and even further elaborate on that. Gotcha. Thanks so much. Next up, Steven Steen, you sicko. Thanks to your super chat. He said, ETA, five days until heaven touches earth. I think maybe he means the flat earth debate. If you haven't heard about it, it's going to be between Nathan Thompson and Team Skeptic. Hopefully, the universe doesn't implode. Hopefully, it's not too crazy, guys. I don't know. We're hoping that it's going to be safe, but they're going to be in the same room. So, like, five feet away from each other, face to face, and hopefully, live. it's going to be safe. I don't know. A live, live debate. This, wow. Absolutely. So, we will be in person in Dallas. It's going to the be... Only you're, you're gonna have viewers all around the globe yes yeah, yeah. and the, the only thing i'm disappointed about in that is that it wasn't a reference to the law of fives it's going <laughs> to be wild i am stoked so whew, it's gonna be a, a lot of fun but yes anyway steven Steen, thanks for that uh ap thanks for your super chat they said do you believe universes or realities magically create themselves for no reason whatsoever fyi this is a religious position and is implied by atheism implied no i don't think it's implied but um uh, i do have some thoughts on this and I, I don't know deflating atheism did you want to answer as well you can go ahead if you like well i i think uh i think uh james misread the the question or something it was very confusing to me but i'm sorry go I, ahead. Can, I can give it another shot let's okay. see here uh do you believe universes or realities magically create themselves for no reason whatsoever fyi this is a religious position and is implied by atheism so in other words they're saying like under atheism like you it's you know you if you believe if you're an atheist then it's implied that you believe that universes or realities magically create themselves for no reason whatsoever yeah, I, uh, I magically is uh, is a real loaded term in that. I I, I won't go so far with that. I I think um, I have put some thought into ex nihilo nothing, absolutely nothing, and I'm thinking that uh, not so much that the universe created itself, um, or even the cosmos for that matter, but more to the point of when we have absolutely nothing, there are logically there's no laws of nature there's no rules there's nothing restricting it as soon as you place a restriction or a rule on it it no longer qualifies as absolutely nothing and because of this that makes it that we can't predict i'm not saying it makes it unpredictable it makes it that we can't predict how it will behave we can't predict that nothing will erupt out of it or that something could erupt out of it so this is a big mystery. This is a big mystery of life. There are different ideas on it. And, and of course, uh, religions have their answers as well. They have a deity that uh, is um, responsible for all this. And I'm just not willing to go there. Okay, well, well I, will, I will say that, uh, that I, I understand what, what the, what the uh, uh, viewer is asking. Uh, if I, I misunderstood, I look forward to hearing clarification. Yeah. No, I would say that that's an uncharitable view of atheism. Now, maybe there are atheists who do believe that. That is, that is a logically self-contradicting uh, view, is, to, is that something can bring itself into existence if it, if it assumes uh, its own kind of uh, uh, you know, causal priority. That, that, that's, a, that's, a, <laughs> that's an illogical position, which doesn't mean that uh, atheists don't believe that. I mean, there could very well be many atheists who believe that. I sure. think the more, uh, uh, right, the more defensible, the more defensible, not defensible, but more defensible atheist position is that the universe is a brute fact, is that it exists just because. 
Now, now, what what you were talking about, Randolph? You were talking about like some sort of state of nothingness where there's no yep. prohibition, out of which emerges the world. I have a ton of problems with that, but yeah, of course uh, you do. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, absolute nothingness would be a lack of, of potentiality too. So an absence. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gosh, yeah. Thank you very much, Dwayne. Burke, thanks for your super chat. They said, money for James to purchase more tissues. Ha ha, very funny. So, with that, one want to uh, know that I am sick, but don't worry. I'm going to, I'm going to bounce back. You know what? And it's Your people. Your funding is cocaine habit. <laughs> yes, that's what it really James is. is tough. James shall overcome. Gotcha. It's, uh, so, yes. Next super chat, we appreciate that. Not my real name. Thanks for yours. They said, more Canadians, please. So you've got a fan out there. I hope that makes you feel good. Randy. All right. Thank you. <laughs> gotcha. Then Michael. I'm glad to come back. Good old Michael, the Canadian atheist. Thanks for your super chat. They said, this is for Stephen Steen to hit on James Moore. Oh, nasty guy. Wrong answer. Not what we're looking for. Steven Steen is like these trolls today. They're yes. just not. They're just not up to up to par with what we've had in the past. Huh? We've got a lot of benevolent trolls. They're always just very kind, very sweet, and sexual. Yeah. So you, you uh, can say whatever you want about me. Just 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 give me a super chat. Yeah. <laughs> Next, <You know. laughs> AP, thanks for your super chat. They said Randolph does default atheism equal valid atheism. Does what atheism? Can you read that again? It broke thanks. up. No problem. Well, they said, does default atheism equal valid atheism? Well, atheism, calling it default atheism sounds like uh, uh, like a redundancy to me. Um, but valid atheism, I don't see how it's invalid. So I, I'm not really sure how to answer this question. Gotcha. Thanks very much. Next up, appreciate your super chat from Dwayne Burke. Thank you for these debates, James and debaters. I'm so glad you enjoy them, Dwayne. It's always a pleasure for me to be here, hanging out with you guys. And thanks to the speakers. They, they really do make the channel fun. So thank you, guys. Fourth Dimensional Jake, thanks for your super chat. He said, atheist. Oh, I think I can't tell if they're using, if it was a typo or if it's like meant to be code. Uh, equals, oh, okay, no, they just mean atheist equals there are no gods, not lack theism. Uh, black theism is uh, I have no idea what that is so uh, yeah they're, uh, uh, anti-theism uh, is what I would classify as a position that there are no deities I, I use the term deities because that includes gods and goddesses and, and other I guess possibilities the um, uh, uh, atheism is just the absence of belief in deities however uh, the statement is not entirely wrong because somebody as I mentioned earlier who takes the position there and they believe that there are no deities is also as a matter of consequence an atheist because they don't believe in deities okay can, can, will you agree with this uh statement is that is that the the lack of belief the absence of belief definition of atheism cannot in principle be a a a position in a debate um normally it's not a position because it's a classification but if somebody wants, to, so I can agree with that respect, um, but it can be a position if somebody wants to justify it with skepticism, since the ultimate conclusion of skepticism is doubt. Okay, well, then that, into your mind, would not be atheism properly defined. That would be that would be with some other non-essential aspect. Of uh, justification, denying. no, no, justification is optional. Okay, that's what just, I'm saying, that's what I'm just saying. To, Justification for not believing something is optional. Not believing right. something is not believing something. Mm -hmm. Assu assuming your premise, yes, I agree with that. But, but like I said in my thing, if you say I lack a belief in God, I could just say I agree. I have no reason to doubt you when you say that you lack a belief in God. So well, there's sure. no basis for debate unless I want to start psychologizing you. Which I sure, know I agree with that. I agree with you there, yes. Gotcha. Next question, appreciate it. Destroying Angel said, D.A., Deflating atheism, do you know what a straw man is? I think this is from all the way back to your opening statement. They must have thought something you said was a straw man. Well, yes, I, I, I came prepared for a, a debate that didn't actually happen. So, so yeah, I tried to cover both bases uh, in my opening statement, and I skipped over a lot of it because it, it just was not pertinent. But, uh, 
I, I hope you will find that the, the position of atheism I was responding to is the position of about 95 plus percent of people who call themselves atheists, which is that God does not exist, that or that God most likely does not exist, and that people who do believe in God are, are irrational. I think those are very common characteristics of atheists, to say the very least. And with all due respect, I reject that uh, in the absence of statistics. Gotcha. Thank you very much. Funny you should ask. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, we're not going to go into that. Next up. So, thanks so much. Quick one. Next is, thanks so much for your question, Craig Nightwolf. They said, for deflating, do trees or rocks or a glass of water have epistemology in which to build a worldview and come to conclusions about whether God exists or not? No, I would say they don't. Gotcha. Thanks so much. Next up, Jeremy Pace, thanks for your question. He said, why do some cultures not have a concept of God if believing in a deity is the default? Well, that's that's a different question. That's a different question. Whether, whether people are more prone to believing God, I believe they are more prone. I believe uh, the book Born Believers uh, supports that that claim. That wasn't no, it wasn't really the 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 topic of the debate, though. Gotcha. Next up, Kay Roach. Thanks for your super chat. They said, "Where does your morality come from, Randolph?" It comes from me. I make my own determination, and I hope that I get it correct. Um, take a look at uh, John Rawls' theory of justice, particularly the the veil of ignorance, which is used by, hopefully, used more and more by legislators to uh, uh, to to draft fair and just legislation that is consistent with the fundamental principles of justice, uh, wherein everybody should be equal under the law, uh, everyone is equal under the law, and everyone should have equal access to the law. So the idea with the veil of ignorance is that when you're drafting legislation, you're supposed to think in terms of this hypothetical idea that I, as a legislator, for example, I, I'm not a legislator, but just as an example, hypothetically, uh, if I was to um, be put into a position that was randomly selected without any of my control in society after I draft these, after these laws come into effect, how best can I draft these laws so that they will be fair? And it's it's kind of a, a mental exercise in a way, but it's an important one because um, it causes us to think about all the different possible ways that this law could affect different people. It can affect poor people, it can affect rich people, it can affect people with different privileges for different things, people with military access or not, people who uh, have uh, certain health conditions, uh, people with uh, linguistic uh, uh, language uh, difficulties, um, blind people, deaf people, all kinds of things. See, the more that you can consider, the more that you can draft this law fairly. I take this philosophy and I, I attempt to the best that I of my ability to try to apply that to my own moral determinations on things. I don't know if I'm doing it correctly, but I, I certainly like, I certainly strive to. Um, and I, I, I still question whether I am doing it correctly if I've overlooked something when I make these determinations, but, but I do the best that I can with that. So that's probably at the core of, I would say that's at the core of my decision-making um, and uh, just trying to understand different perspectives and whatnot. Engaging in these debates helps to, helps me to understand more perspectives as well and different ways of thinking. So that's, uh, I hope that helps to answer uh, the question about where my morality comes from comes from it me seems, it seems to me you contradicted yourself within the Hold space on one second we oh uh, just to keep going with it as to try to get through as many audience questions because they they fire them in and i want to try to get through as many as we can that was a deep question it required a longer answer i, I can yeah. give you a chance to defend yourself since uh deflating uh, said that you had contradicted yourself so i'll give you a chance yeah, if you well, wanna... well he, said, he says that he is the source of his own morality and he tries to get it right get it right compared to what it seems like you're assuming uh, there, there's some external standard, and then you give an example uh, of Rawls's, uh, you know, Rawls's model that that's assuming that 
egalitarianism is is a desirable outcome. Could you put it in two sentences, though? How it's I, actually, I, I can answer that. I, I don't. Uh, I don't uh, think that my sense of morality is objective in any way. I, I try to make objective determinations as best I can, but I know that the influences around me and the, the system I live in with its laws here in Canada and, and other sorts of things are subjective influences. So I do the best I can. I am the source of making my own determination on morality, but I am looking at other factors as well. So it's not just me. I'm, I'm having to consider other things. I'm sorry if that sounded like a contradiction that was definitely not intended to be. Gotcha. Thanks so much. Next up, Got a super chat from Fourth Dimensional Jake. Appreciate your question. They said, atheist is a non-theist, but non-theist is not necessarily an atheist. A house is not always a castle. Consult the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. As I mentioned earlier, standard encyclopedia of philosophy has a defective definition. It ignores linguistic structure. It ignores anti-theism, um, doesn't even define it, and uh, is somewhat esoteric within their own circles of philosophy. We did cover this near the beginning. Gotcha. Thanks so much. Next, we appreciate it. Your super chat translator, Carminum. Thanks for yours. Uh, they said, trained linguist here, the structure of quote-unquote atheism is ambiguous, like how quote-unquote, unlockable can mean either unable to be locked or able to be unlocked. And this is why we need to look at the etymology as well. And uh, when we take a look at uh, common usage, we see that uh, uh, the absence of belief in deities is what is there. I don't see the ambiguity there, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to look into this because uh, that is a very interesting point. Thank you. Gotcha. Next, K. Wright, thanks for your super chat. They're coming after you, Randolph. They said, thank you for your answer. With no ultimate right morality, who gets to determine right from wrong, though? Most people who do evil don't feel they are. Yeah, and so this is where we have laws that are formed in society, and this is why we need to have laws, and we need to enforce them. We, we form governments whose fundamental purpose is, one of the fundamental purposes, uh, and I would say one of the primary ones, is to protect its citizens, uh, to oppress the strong from oppressing the weak, and, uh, and that sort of thing. And so we have these laws in place to say, hey, these are certain basic rules that we need to follow, not killing each other, um, not uh, um, uh, uh, vandalizing each other's property, not uh, uh, causing injuries and things like that, uh, all kinds of different rights and freedoms and, and whatnot. So we have a trade-off wherein we live in society and there are certain things that we can't do and they can be extremely limiting to the psychopaths. Uh, but of course, if everybody was permitted to be psychopathic and just kill anybody they wanted, uh, our society probably wouldn't last very long. Gotcha. Thanks so much. Next up. Where did that go? Hold on. Let me pull this up. No, it would be a terrible that. society to live in. <laughs> Thanks for your question from... Try, try walking across the bridge to the Detroit. Uh, I did that when I was very young. Not the bridge, but a street nearby a bridge. Next up, praise I am that I am. Thanks for your question. They said, has Randolph seen the studies that show children uh, intuitively know that God exists? No, I have not. Gotcha. So with that, folks, we are at about the hour and a half uh, point at which... One, I want to let you know, so thanks so much to our speakers. It's been a pleasure to have them. It's always fun. And we also have a Discord party afterwards. So I will be in the Discord, like, doing this new thing called live chat. I'm still learning it. Very embarrassing. But I will be there. It's going to be a terrific time. I am very excited. Basically, it's just going to be, like, a quick hangout. If you have, like, any sort of feedback, you're like, hey, hey, this is how the channel might be improved. Like, love to hear it. Or if you're like, hey, I love this. This is like, oh, it's the, the coolest thing. Keep doing it. That's amazing. Let me know. We can <laughs> keep doing we? it. So very excited to get your feedback. I, you know, otherwise just like, hey, you know, introduce yourself. Say who you are. I'm oh, excited to meet you. It's always fun. You guys make it a blast for me to be here. So uh, with that, I know that Randolph will be there. We'll be partying on Discord together immediately after this. And then also... 
I'll, I'll make a good effort. I'll make a good effort. I can't play the entire duration. No problem. Don't feel obligated. I'd like to have you there. Okay. Yeah. Happy to have you there, but don't feel obligated. It's all right. And so thanks for all of your questions, folks. It's always a good time. The voice chat is that's what Tony Designs told me. That's what it's it's called, I guess. I'm new to this. I'm I'm cool. I'm with it. I'm getting it. All right. So stoked to have you guys. <laughs> final things we can say before we go i guess <laughs> if you guys want to make any uh last summary points you're more than welcome to if you have a uh, kind of like ways of drawing together the threads of the discussion uh i guess just uh i'd like to talk a little bit about my organization if that's okay you bet all right yeah so i'm with the canadian atheists we're at www.canadianatheists.ca if you'd like to learn more about us or even become a member, uh, everybody's welcome. The uh, membership is only $42 a year Canadian, which is a real deal for American dollars right now. The, uh, um, and it'll be very helpful because it supports us and what we do. There's also, for those who are more interested in the definition of atheism, uh, please definitely take a look at this website, www.defineatheism.com. And uh, with that, um, thank you very much for having us on your show, James, and uh, Deflating Atheism. It was a pleasure to speak with you and to meet you and, uh, and have this conversation today. I, I really enjoyed it. You bet. Thanks so much. And Deflating, if you have any last statements, the floor is yours. Yeah, just, just, just thank you. Thank you uh, uh, to James. Thank you to Randolph. Uh, I, I, this was very pleasant, even if it wasn't exactly the debate I, I came prepared for. I came with a gun to a, to, to a, to a tickle fight, I think. <laughs> but, but yes, uh, please uh, subscribe uh, to, if you are so inclined, uh, to my, to my uh, YouTube channel, Deflating Atheism. I also have a, a, a you know, attendant uh, Facebook page, Deflating Atheism, Instagram page, Deflating Atheism, and Patreon, Deflating Atheism. So please check all of those out. Thank you. Terrific. Excellent. Thanks so much, folks. It's always a pleasure. Always very fun. Very exciting. So with that, we will see you hopefully in the good old Discord for that party. See you at the party, Richter. Looking forward to it. It's Thank you, James. It's going to be a great one. Take care. Keep sifting out the reasonable from the unreasonable, everybody. Thank you, both of you. Have a good day. Remember, Remember the force will be with you. Always.